Thank you, Maurice. Appreciate y'all being here today. And uh, appreciate you giving me a round of applause when I walk out. That makes me feel really nice. And uh, hey, today we're in Luke chapter 15. If you have a Bible, let's go ahead and turn there. Luke chapter 15. Um, I was commanded that thou shalt not preach longer than 15 minutes today. And so why are we clapping? Man. Y'all, <laughs> hey, uh, Luke chapter 15 is where we're going to be. My mama told me that if I can't say something nice, don't say anything at all. So sometimes you just got to keep your mouth closed. And so Luke chapter 15, starting in verse 1, we're going to go to verse 7. And uh, let's pray. Lord, we give you thanks for the day. We thank you so much for the many blessings that you've given to us. We thank you for your love and kindness and, and generosity. I thank you for this church and their love for you. I thank you for their generosity, their willingness to give, and their willingness to, to serve this community, to, to love Jesus, and to, and to love people. And Father, I pray that you would just continue to watch over us as a congregation. Bless this church. Father, I pray that you would bless our time together today as we gather together to worship you. I, I pray, Lord, that you would allow for us to, uh, to hear a word, a message from you today. I thank you for these kids that are going to come here in just a little bit and sing and and perform and and lead us father and i just i pray lord that you would bless them that you would allow for them to know of your love for them father i, I pray for our leaders and our, our staff who serve so diligently to minister to serve these kids and and some of them are mine and i'm i'm just uh, I'm, I'm just so grateful for them and the work that they're doing Father God, we love you so much, and I, I recognize that, uh, that I have part in our service today, so Lord, if you would, forgive me of my sin, cleanse me of the unrighteousness that is in my life, and give me the grace that is needed to perform, uh, to, 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 to preach your word in a way that bring honor and glory to your name, in a way that bring sinners to repentance and believers into a time of renewal and their relationship with you. Father, uh, if there's someone here today that has never accepted Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, I pray that today would be the day of their salvation, a day where they admit to their sinner, believe that Jesus is the Son of God, and confess Christ as Savior and Lord. Jesus, we love you, and pray all these things in your name. And all God's people said, amen. Today is the uh, second Sunday of Advent. Our, our theme for today is joy. Uh, what brings you joy? Uh, I had a I had to go to the dentist this week and get a filling, and um, I was giving the dentist a hard time. I, I couldn't get my tooth to get numb, and uh, she would come in. She gave me a shot, and she came back in like 20 minutes later, and she asked me if it was numb. And I said, I don't think so. It doesn't feel numb, and so she gave me another shot and then came back in 30 minutes later, and I said, yeah, I think it's good, and then she started working on it. I'm like, no, it's not good. Uh, give me another shot, and so she did, but then she gave me some, some laughing gas, you know, and let me tell you, that made me pretty happy, you know, and so, uh, you know, we need to have those in a business meeting. Some of y'all, you know, kind of grumpy, just put those on. And Yesterday, Japanese national and, and MLB superstar Shohei Hotani signed with the LA Dodgers for 10 years, $700 million. That would give you some joy right there, you know what I mean? And so that gave you, it's just, but you know, the people of Japan, his, he, they just celebrated when he signed that contract, a, a record, MLB contract, the people of Japan, they, they weren't mad at him, they were happy for him. What makes you happy? What gives you joy? Would ace in your finals make you happy? How about a promotion? A weekend with your family? Would getting what you wanted for Christmas make you happy? Would watching a church full of little kids sing about Jesus make you happy? What brings you joy? Our second Sunday of Advent is joy. And the joy of Christmas is found in the arrival of the Messiah and the knowledge that sinners are saved through Jesus Christ, the Messiah. 
In today's passage of Scripture, Jesus is being questioned by the Pharisees about why he's eating with sinners. The text says in verse 1, all the tax collectors and sinners were approaching to listen to him, and the Pharisees and scribes were complaining. This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. I want you to know that any sinner is welcome at Wyatt Park Baptist Church. Uh, there's nobody that's not welcome. Now, many of you may not like what you hear at Wyatt Park because we're a conservative Baptist church and we preach God's word. We, we're unapologetic about it and we just, we just, that's what we do. It's who we are. And sometimes that offends people and it makes people upset, it makes people mad. And, and I, I'm not going to apologize for that, but I want you to know that no matter who you are, you're welcome here. I, I have a lot of friends that are, that are sinners yet to be saved. I, I have a lot of family that are sinners yet to be saved. And, and my utmost desire and prayer for them is that they would repent of their sin and follow after Jesus Christ. I, uh, I know that Christ came and died on the earth, not just for people like me, not just for sinners like me, but for all types of sinners. This is why Jesus welcomed and, and ate with them because he, he loved them and, and he wanted to have a relationship with them and he wanted them to, to know what it meant to be right in the eyes of God. This is why he ate with those who the Pharisees would not. But I don't want you to get this twisted. You know, this isn't a Hallmark movie. The Bible is not uh, make-believe or uh, everything is just perfect and I mean, Jesus hated sin, friend, friends. He loved the sinner, but he hated the sin. If Jesus loved sin, I mean, then why did he turn the, the money changer's table over at the temple? If Jesus hated sin, then why did he say to the Samaritan woman at the well, you have been married five times, and the man that you're with now he isn't your husband. If you love sin, why did he confront it? If God loves sin, then why did he send his son, Jesus Christ, to come and die on the cross for sin? Make no mistake, God loves you, but he hates the sin that's in your life. He hates it. If you don't believe me, Close your eyes for just a second. Just actually, would you just do me a favor? Just close your eyes. I'm not going to ask you to do anything else, like raise your hand or anything. But just close your eyes for a second and pray with me this. God, show me the sin that is in my life that you don't want there. Just pray that. God, show me the sin that's in my life that you don't want in there. When I pray that, I'm not sure about you, but sin pops up. And, and that's the Holy Spirit, friends. I, I, pray that pray on a, I pray that prayer on a daily basis. When I lay my head on my pillow, I ask the Lord, show me the sin that's in my life. Show me what I did today that you don't want there. And the Holy Spirit, we talked about this last week, the Holy Spirit speaks to us and reveals spiritual truth and, and enables us to do things that we're not able to do on our own. But God shows us the sin that he hates. If you ask God, God, show me what's in my life that you don't want there. The sin that's like God, because God hates that in your life. It just, it's destructive. It, it, it wastes your time. It wastes your life. It wastes your years. It, it takes away from what God has planned for you. And God hates that. And, and God sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross, to be born of a manger so that you might not have sin in your life, so that you might be saved from that sin, friends. Lord, have mercy on us, a sinner. When Jesus heard their graveling, he told this parable to the Pharisees. What man among you who has a hundred sheep loses one of them and does not leave the 99 in the open field and go after the lost one until he finds it. When he has found it, he joyfully pursues it, joyfully puts it on his shoulders and coming home, he calls his friends and neighbors together saying to them, rejoice with me 
because I have found my lost sheep. I tell you in the same way, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous people who did not need repentance. You ever lose something? Yesterday I, I, afternoon, I, I couldn't find my keys. I, I was looking all around the house and looking in my pants pocket, my jacket. I looked in, on my dresser, I looked in the closet, I looked on the, the bathroom sink. You know, I mean, I just was looking everywhere. Finally, I broke down and I said, babe, have you seen my keys? And she goes, yeah, I put them on the key holder. I said, that could be like, that could be the, literally the worst place you could put them, babe. You know, you could put them anywhere else, but that might be the worst place, you know. You ever lose something valuable? Keys, wallet, cell phone, diamond necklace, you know, I mean. But the thing about, I mean, early on in our marriage, I bought Kathy a, a diamond pendant necklace. You know, past, present, future, little small diamonds that are in there, nothing. You know, I was poor, so I did the best I could. But, you know, like, uh, I still am, but, you know, that's a different story. But, uh, about five years ago, she lost it and uh, couldn't find it. In her defense, though, she, she will tell you. I'm going to look over here because she's sitting over there. And uh, <laughs> in her defense, she said, I know where it's at. I, 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 I know the box that it's in, but I don't know where the box is at. I haven't lost it. And I said, baby, I don't know if you know this, but the, the exact definition of losing something is that right there? You know, like that's the exact. <laughs> but you ever lose something? Cell phone, keys, wallet. I mean, something valuable. And the thing about, like oftentimes when we lose something, it's like we just had it. You know, like, I mean, the wallet was in my pants last night. The, the, I just had my, I just made a phone call with my cell phone. I, I just had the key. I used it to drive the truck. I mean, we... We just had it. And we know what it's like to have those keys. We know what it's like to, to have the cell phone. And when you lose something, it's like you know what it's like. But when you're spiritually lost, it's just the opposite, is it not? I mean, when you're spiritually lost, you have no idea what it means to be saved. You have no idea the joy of being found by Jesus Christ. And friends, let me tell you something. The Bible says, Jesus says, that when a sinner repents, heaven rejoices. And like I, I mean, I don't know about you, but I look forward to the day that we get to go to heaven. You know, to sing with the angels, to rejoice when we see a sinner repent and put their faith in Jesus Christ. You know, I, today we're going to experience a joyful thing to watch kids come up and sing. You know, one of the most joyful moments of my time being a father was getting to lead my daughter to a saving relationship with Jesus Christ, to baptize her in the waters. And I mean, I just... And it's just an amazing thing to be able to experience. One, time, one of the reasons why I offer parents the opportunity to baptize their kids is because it's, there's nothing like it. There's no joy that can take the place of one man, one woman, one child putting their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. And if you've never experienced that joy, If you've never experienced that love, that hope, that peace, I just want to plead with you today to look inwardly at your life and recognize that you're a sinner and that you need Jesus Christ. And the Bible says that if you put your faith and trust in him, that he will save you, that you will be saved. Would you do that today? We're going to have our kids come up here in just a second, and they're going to share some Christmas joy with you. Afterwards, we're going to have some cookies and drinks out in the foyer at the Welcome Center, and you all are welcome to come. But if you would like to talk with me 
about salvation, I would love to be able to have that conversation with you. Would you pray with me? Lord, we give you thanks for this day. We thank you so much for the many blessings that you've given to us. We thank you for the blessing of salvation, for the joy that's found in knowing you through your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for the Holy Spirit and that the Holy Spirit enables us to know spiritual truth, to do spiritual things. And Father, I pray that today that you would allow for us to understand who we are in relationship to you. Lord Jesus, would you today speak to us in a mighty way? I pray for these kids today and that you would bless them and and allow for them to experience your joy. I thank you for Amy and for all of the work that her and her team has done to, to make this happen today. Jesus, we love you so much. I pray all these things in your name. And all God's people said, amen.